All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the final hour of our Pittsburgh PodCon. Woo! Y'all having a good time tonight? Yeah, that's what's up. I am not. All right. Now, closing off for us, very popular podcast, the You Jag Off podcast show. I'd like to introduce to you Miss Rachel Renneback, Mary McAnellan, and John Chamberlain. Give it up for them. All right, it sounds like I'm at my dining room table at home. Yeah, yes, Yes, just same. Actually, that's more positive feedback. All right, so my name is John Chamberlain, and this is the Jagoff Podcast. And? And I'm Rachel Rennebeck, and I'm with him on the Jagoff Podcast. So this, uh, we figured uh, our normal podcast, we would talk about our normal podcast, but this is a podcast for podcasters, so we thought we should do a little bit of content. We've never done anything, not that we really, you really care about us, but the, uh, we thought we've never really given our background on it. We've been on the River's Edge, and we've been on uh, the No Bullshit Marketing podcast, and we've never really kind of told the story. So we thought we'd take a few minutes to do that, and then uh, talk about, uh, first of all, how, does anybody have more than two wristbands on tonight? That shows where you've been all day today. So uh, we've been, and then part of the podcast, we wanted to speak to another podcaster who's a partner, uh, Mary McAnellen, who has her podcast here at the table next to us and who brought our stuff here today. We thought we'd talk to her about why she does a podcast from a content marketing standpoint. Sound good, right? Am I allowed to talk? Or yeah. Okay. I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, and he also pointed out that we might be the oldest three people here, but I'm looking around to see if maybe I have competition. I haven't found it yet, but I think you're right. We're the three oldest. Yeah, yeah and so we're thanks. on the latest. We're supposed to be in rocking chairs by now. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, so the Jagoff podcast started uh, from a blog called yajagoff.com, and uh, we started into some videos calling Yakin' with you Jagoff. And we asked, uh, I, we had some people tell us, consult with us about the website and tell us how to maybe make some money. And the one thing they said to do was start a podcast. And that's the last thing anybody wanted to do because we were all, the, the blog was for nothing. So we didn't need one more damn thing to do for free. And uh, so we started the podcast about three years ago. And quite honestly, the podcast has grown beyond the blog at this point. And we've had some growing pains. We've grown with technology. And uh, I'll call back to Missy and Mike Sorg, and uh, who else? Berg Baby, and I'm trying to think. There's one more person who they were sweethearts at PodCamp when this old guy showed up there with all these young people and go, I don't even know what to do. How can you help me? And they were the sweethearts that, that helped me out, and uh, so it was really cool. Oh, Amanda. Amanda was there. So, yeah, so we really appreciate that. But anyways, <laughs> the Ajago Podcast, tell them what we do every week, right? Oh, okay. It's my turn again. So every week, uh, typically on a Saturday, we meet and we get to interview really interesting Pittsburgh people. The word Jagoff is not a swear word. Um, it is an umbrella of all things that happen in the city and all things um, could be any category from food to technology to entertainment. And we're very fortunate because we have uh, Total Sports Enterprises as our sponsor. And we've had the privilege of interviewing, like yesterday, James Conner, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Heinz Ward all within an hour. And we're very fortunate because uh, we don't ask the hardball questions. We ask the fun, where do you like to eat in Pittsburgh? What types of things do you do in Pittsburgh? Why is Pittsburgh important to you? And you know, that's the thread that kind of weaves us all together. So we've been very fortunate on the content that we've been able to use. And the podcast, speaking of content, has become kind of the third arm to our marketing company. So we started, uh, we partnered as marketing partners, and we have Yajagov Media. So we do marketing. We have about nine clients, um, right? Nine yeah. clients, a couple projects. And we use the podcast as a content development for our marketing. So it's a resource so that people understand what podcasts are and how they can be used from a media standpoint and as a resource to grow their own business. So it's helped our clients as well. Yeah, so like and taking from what Rachel said, the market, you know, we always say we play, we work during the week so we can play in the podcast sandbox on Saturday so we can afford to do that. But it has been a part of our lives in that 
as Rachel said, you know, if somebody needs PR, we can help them PR, certainly pitch it to all the news stations and the radio stations. They might give them seven or eight minutes, right? It, maybe two minutes on TV news, but we can give them 20 minutes on our podcast and then give them a video or whatever else. So we've been very fortunate that we understand that. Uh, that that's, it, as you said, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a part of our marketing portfolio, which helps us, again, make some money at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've uh, we um, I'm not sure. I, I look out at the room here and I see a bunch of hyper focused podcasts, whether it's comic books or movies. Well, I guess the one thing maybe we struggle with is we're not hyper focused. You could say Pittsburgh focused, but I'm not sure that that's really niche. But we do get a lot of listeners from outside of the Pittsburgh area, people who used to live here, who seem to enjoy to hear things that are happening in, in, back in their old hometown. And one of our big rules is that we will not speak Yinzer. So while we understand <laughs> that Pittsburgh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that was my rule when I became the co-host, it was important to not sound like what people categorize us as. And, and we spoke, we just interviewed... Um, Oh, who's the actor? John Carroll. Uh, uh, John Jim Lynch Carroll. Carroll. John Lynch Carroll. And he's filming a web series here, and he was on the Drew Carey show for a while, and he can speak Pittsburghese like no one I've ever heard. And he said, whether I like it or not, we all slip into maybe not the twang of Pittsburghese or the Yinzer, but we have these words that you can definitely tell we're from Pittsburgh. So I'll take that, but I am not a Yinzer by any means. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So we've been fortunate at this point, and, and again, certainly not dropping names at all. We've been very lucky where somehow we get, we're getting calls from people to come on the podcast. Instead of us literally begging everybody like we did in the beginning, we get some calls to ha come on the podcast. And again, we're very fortunate. The one thing I will know is if everybody's out there trying to monetize their podcast, I think you have to understand your personality of your podcast. Because early on in my blog, when I was just writing the blog, uh, we, there was an issue at Penn State, as you might know, and, uh, and I started to write a big Jagoff blog about the people at Penn State. And I posted and said, boy, wait till you see tomorrow's blog. And people said, wait, we don't read your blog for that kind of stuff. We like silliness. So it kind of told me how to not, so I took the blog down. Same thing with the podcast. We were really anxious to make money. And at one point, we did get a sponsor that was a significant amount of money. This was before Rachel was a co-host and, and an owner. But we did get a, an offer for a podcast sponsor, for a weekly sponsor, and we really thought about it, and it tussled, we tussled with it, and actually we were really good friends, and I called her and I said, there's this podcast, and it would make us look a little bit tacky. This business, you said there's this, a business. Oh yeah, this business that would make us look a little bit tacky. And we took all of her advice and, and, and other female advice, because it was, it was, a, it was, another, it was a bar, that kind of had a you know a, a man connotation to it, and that's the last thing we wanted. So we actually turned down our first offer for a, for a sponsor. And I think as a as a podcaster, you have to decide what the personality of your podcast is and what what you'll take. Everybody wants to make money from their podcast, right? But you do have to be careful with that. I think it's a two way street, and I think it has to make sense. And we're not going to solicit sponsorships just to make money. We want it to work for both of us so that you build relationships because longevity is what we all you know. For, so. Right. All right. So you probably don't need to. You probably don't need to know or care about our backgrounds. But again, we are the three oldest people in here. And since I mentioned the three people, we're going to bring in Mary Mack. But I'm the youngest of the three. Oh, there you I'm go. The oldest. I need something. I need something. Right. I can't stand it. Right. So, so the podcast appears every Tuesday on iTunes and uh, yajagoff.com. Stitcher. And, yeah, that's her line. And then every Thursday on the River's Edge. It's been really cool to be a part of the River's Edge program because, you know, it's just one more thing where people can go and listen and we can get exposure. We love it. And, uh, but we've done some podcast consulting. And uh, not that we're experts because, as Rachel will tell you, as Mary will tell you, I hate technology, but I love technology. I hate when it doesn't work and I can't fix it. And Sorg will tell you. He knows, him, he knows I've complained. So, uh, and I whine like a baby. I don't even complain. I whine like a baby. But um, anyways, we did some, we did some uh, presentations at the Pittsburgh Business Show about why, con why podcast is good for, one, either if you're doing marketing, like buy, making ad buys, or two, marketing your own product. And I think that Mary Mack, who's been a friend of ours for a long time, 
actually, she, this is crazy. She was a friend of the Yajagoff blog before she even knew it was me behind it, right? <laughs> yep, that's but, true. Uh, so Mary started a podcast based on, you know, for content marketing. So welcome to the Yajagoff podcast for the second time in her lifetime, Mary Mac. right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, Mary Thank you. Mac. So the first time Mary Mack was on the podcast, actually, just the third time. Yeah, first time she right. was on the podcast, really like we did a debate you. about Jello pretzel Jello salads, right? Yes. And is it is it a, is it a salad or not? Right? Yes. It's not a salad. <laughs> it's a it's, it's a, a side. A, it was a, a it was a, if it's good or not. I oh, think if it's good, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. So we kind of had this debate. The second time you were on our hundredth episode, and Mary made a bunch of the excuse me. <laughs> Hey, Mary made a bunch of the uh, strawberry pretzel jello salad pies, and we had a pie eating contest. And now today you're going to talk well, we professionally. We had them for our hundredth episode. Did you say that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, That's, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So Mary, why did you start a podcast? Because God knows you don't need one more thing to do in your life. <laughs> true. True. Well, uh, I started a home baking business in 2006, and it's licensed by the state of Pennsylvania. Um, that I can bake in my home and sell things and make things. And um, I make baking mis mixes and fresh mixes. Then my friend and I started a store. And then we started doing farmer's markets. And um, podcasting was growing all that time. And my daughter and I went to a pod camp at Work Hard Pittsburgh um, just to see what it was about. And we, while we were there, we thought, you know, this would be a really great way to promote our businesses if we had a podcast that we could like, um, I guess our reference was going back to old time radio when, uh, when products would actually sponsor the show and the, and the ad would be a part of the show. Oh, so right. we thought, oh, if we did a podcast and we said, you know, we're talking about um, making a certain sort of a food, then we could use the mixes that I make or use the things that I bake in it or or whatever and kind of promote ourselves and our web store and our live store and all the things that we're doing. So we started out kind of like that and then it kind of grew into more of a cooking show where we make all different sorts of things and um, what, what we've kind of done is branded ourselves across the board so we have the podcast, the website, the web store, all of our social media, um, all of our things linked together, and we use that common thread of uh, in the kitchen with Mary Mac. We have all sorts of things that go along with that, like recipe cards, instructional videos, um, things that we do. We're out in the community that we sometimes film live, and things like that that we connect with each other um, to our social media presence, to our internet presence, and to our live presence, and kind of use that to market ourselves. And that's wow. really why we got into it. That's awesome. Now, how long, I don't know this, how long have you been podcasting? Um, I think it's been almost three years. We have 70, ep we just did our 70th episode, which was um, Brie en Crute. <laughs> and uh, we, we drop one, we drop a podcast every other week on Sundays. So that's I'm, why it's taken I'm so long. I'm not talking over you, but... We, I started this keto, which is more like protein, oh, yeah. you know, and I'm not a meat eater, so it's hard to do keto <laughs> when you don't really eat meat, but I found a recipe with brie and pecans. Oh, yeah, it's oh, good. My, he was like, oh, my gosh. You have it to was fantastic. It. Yeah. We were, oh, I was licking the bowl. Yeah, yeah he has use. for sure seconds. I mean, it's nothing. It was yeah. like oil and you throw it in the oven. It was so easy. Yep. Yeah, so you should start you making that for us. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody out there a victim of Mary Mac's cinnamon rolls? And by victim, I mean... By, vic <laughs> by victim, I mean you have diabetes right now because you yeah. love them so no, much. No, they've all yeah. had a cookie, though. Every person <laughs> in here has had a cookie. Right, or two. And no. you just keep bringing them back out. It's like the loaves and fishes <laughs> in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> she right. just brings more chocolate. Mary Mac <laughs> showed up at the river's edge. Literally, <laughs> and is passed out uh, her cinnamon rolls, and they just She's kept. Not passed yeah. Out. yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, so, so, Mary, were you able to equate an increase in followers, an increase in sales, or, or anything to your podcast at this point? So, monetize might not well, be or getting even money for. A it, but yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we get a lot of. Uh, our store is called Standing Chimney. It's in Lawrence County, 
And we have uh, a I lot of I passed it three times trying to get there the first I'm time. I'm wearing their he earrings. Was, <laughs> <laughs> he was looking at the opposite side of the road. It was hilarious. But um, Very surprised. we get people that stop in all the time that said, you know, I was listening to your podcast and I heard you were open this weekend. Um, and like I said, we link everything on social media. So I think that's important um, when you do podcast to not just drop your podcast and leave it lay there. I think you have to, uh, we, I have uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and constantly, not constantly sharing your podcast, but mentioning it, um, having a, a, a post about it or something like that just to keep it in people's face. Because I get a lot of that, like, um, for example, we did a large fall festival this weekend, and I have people come up and say, I really enjoyed your podcast last week, or, you know, I was at the store and it reminded me that I wanted to do this, you know, whatever. So all of those touches that you have can all be drawn back into one point and that's kind of a neat thing because you don't I guess it does monetize but it's not somebody putting money in your hand it's you pulling all these people into yourself yeah right you know and bringing them to you so. yeah yeah it's the that's relatability factor yes right? yes uh, so Mary is the kind of person that we typically have on our podcast each week we have two to three maybe four guests we call it kind of magazine format if you haven't listened to it. It's just all this cool stuff going on in Pittsburgh. So this week we might be talking about technology. We might be talking about medicine, whatever. And, but we always do it in a lighthearted way. And Rachel always prepares some silly question that sort of strings the whole it's podcast together. <laughs> right, but a unique question. She's our Andy Sheehan, if you even know who Andy Sheehan is. Uh, <laughs> it's like, we don't even watch the news. <laughs> <laughs> but every week we try to have something that has some continuity. And thanks to the River's Edge, because every week we try to highlight a Pittsburgh band, Pittsburgh musician. And we would always reach out to different ones to try to be on. But it's been really easy since we connected with the River's Edge, right? Yes. And we co-hosted the Howard's Pub open mic night and got a plethora of musicians from that as well. Plethora. So that kind of cool. Yeah. That's right. Do you know what that means? Yeah. <laughs> And here's the one challenge is that uh, if you haven't listened to the Jagoff podcast, we're certainly not going to force you to listen to it. But I'd ask you to listen to the opening and find out how many Pittsburgh voices you hear on the opening. And I think uh, three or four of them are here tonight. So you have to listen to the Jagoff podcast and see who's talking That's about cool. the word Jagoff, right? There's yeah. some... Yeah, some good friends were here. Yeah, I think the only thing missing right now, this is like a comedian's open mic night. The only thing missing is a blender drink going on right now <laughs> while we're in the middle of a punchline. The jag off me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Love it. Right. So, uh, so anyways, uh, we love um, it, uh, spreading the word about podcasting. We believe that the more podcasters tell the word about podcasting, that, so we love this PodCon, I, PodCon concept. Uh, because the more there are listeners, the more people, potential listeners for everybody, right? And it has been in our vision and our goal to do something similar to maybe work along with, yeah, you know, whomever so that we can make this happen more often. Right. Like connecting with Brian was helpful. And we are finding opportunities where people want podcasts to come and do things. If you're familiar with the old radio days, a lot of the radio stations would line up outside of an event and do all their own take on event. Maybe at Kennywood. So our goal is to try to find podcasters who would be interested in doing that with us where we would bring a slew of podcasters to an event. So certainly get in touch with us if you, if you would like to do that, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, the, the, uh, the River's Edge contact has been good. So um, I don't know. I, I, anything else we want to say at this point? I think everybody... I think they're podcasted out. I think they're <laughs> podcasted out. So your challenge is... Uh, so our podcast recorded yesterday at the Robinson Mall. We were very fortunate to have the largest audience for our podcast ever yesterday. That's oh, wow. the good news. The bad news is they weren't there for us. Not at all. They were there to see James Conner and uh, Juju Smith-Schuster and Heinz Ward. So, but the cool thing is they were, we got to do that. And they're on the podcast this week. So it'll drop on Tuesday. Uh, so, and you'll hear it but on the Definitely take a Thursday. listen because... We were really fortunate to capture some more intimate stories with them this time. We've interviewed Heinz. We've interviewed all three of them before, but Heinz specifically was more endearing this time than last time, and he really got into the Pittsburgh feel, yeah. right? Yep. And James Conner, who is my favorite, goes into why his hair looks like it does, and 
talks about <laughs> yeah talks about um, <laughs> just what it's like to have had to take on a bigger role as a young guy. Yeah, yeah. So and Juju is coming back as Juju Claus again this year. Yes, oh. Juju Smith Schuster will be Juju Claus for the homeless children. And uh, so we and the, again, the cool thing is, is that because of the podcast, we were able to get to know him for that and help him with that. So the podcast, while it may not have made money at that particular point, and it does, certainly doesn't make a sustainable wage, but it is it gets us access points to uh, to do certain cool things like that. So we appreciate Brian and uh, uh, and Sarah, the invitation to be on the river's edge because we get to do cool things like this. We're sorry we are late. Our, our schedule actually was the Oktoberfest and Butler Fair today. And then we ran down to do, we do the um, tailgate with the casino. Intercom, yeah. Intercom and the casino every home game, Steeler home game. And then here. So I apologize that we were late, but you didn't really care anyways, did you? <laughs> <laughs> You're like my kids. We don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. All right. So anyways, thanks very much for thanks listening. For time. And thanks to River's Edge for hosting the PodCon. And Mike Sorg and Missy and all the people who put all their time and effort into it. We appreciate it. And thanks to Spirit. Cool. You jagoff.com every Tuesday. <laughs>